Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Michelle. And I'm Tony. And today we're going to start a new series that we had talked about a little bit ago, but we wanted to do something where we post a video about once a week um, where we just sit down and talk to you guys as if you were here right with us sitting down at our picnic table. So we're going to call this sit down and chat with the Berry Mountain Homestead. It's a beautiful day in Pennsylvania today. And like we said, we're sitting down at our picnic table under a tree. And we just got home a couple days ago from vacation. We went on vacation to celebrate our one year anniversary. It's been a crazy year, yes, to say the least. You guys have seen our journey if you've been subscribed to us. And if you are not subscribed, you should. And you should go back and watch those videos because it's been a crazy year. And you can catch up with everything that's been going on. Yeah. We used to live in the suburbs. We always knew we wanted to um, move to the country, move back here. This is where I grew up. But for the time being, we lived in the suburbs. We were suburban gardening. And then we got the opportunity to move out here, got new jobs. Um, we started our homestead started logging our land and started gardening so it's been crazy crazy ride this first year of marriage but things are starting to you know settle into a rhythm yes and also progress is starting to be made on our home and everything and we have been getting a lot of questions either comments or dms on instagram um basically like what's going on with the house you know stuff like that so yeah, we, we haven't really given you guys an update too much lately no so, not, not really as you guys saw we logged the land mm -hmm. and we have been working slowly but surely to get all the firewood that's left over from the treetops that they left and that has taken a big chunk of time it's right up there that's if we're looking up yeah, there every time i look that way i'm looking at the <laughs> land <laughs> but the treetops are all tangled up and, th and that's been the big kind of uh challenge is we want to use our resources we want to use the trees that we cut um, I'm not like big on cutting trees to begin with but it had to be done and so I wanted to make sure we used it all little did I know when it's tangled up like that it's actually really dangerous and so we've been cutting the firewood that we can get um, we do have a winch on our new ATV so that will come in handy but unfortunately I think some of it might have to be burned simply because it's just so tangled up and a mess the excavator gave us an estimate we actually got it on our honey yep. honeymoon not our honeymoon on our vacation <laughs> our anniversary trip and um unfortunately i just feel like he can get rid of the tree stumps and the treetops for the house and for the septic but it's just gonna be a little too expensive for three whole acres the rest of the pastures to, yeah for him to do that plus it's something really we can do and so that might be what just have to put the work in what happens yep so you might see some vlogs of us doing a lot of manual labor a lot of moving uh, moving logs and burning and all kinds of stuff to try to get that done but the, the biggest update about our journey to build a homestead is that we actually have our estimate now yeah. for all the site work and the driveway and the actual septic system put in uh, mm -hmm. it was roughly what we thought it was going to be give or take yeah <laughs> me now yes me like months and months ago probably not i didn't realize how much work how much money goes into when you just have land and that's and no it no utilities there other than electric i mean yeah and if if you're watching this and this is like a dream of yours i know there's some people who have come in and said things like that and you don't have family land you don't have land that um, you're working off of if you can find land that already has a septic or something like that will give you a big jump I feel like even in if this there's process. a piece of crap house on it that you're not gonna live in but the septic works yeah and is already permitted mm -hmm. and you don't have to build a new one much better idea yeah to save money at least money time everything yeah we're very grateful that we got our family land so um, and it's, it is kind of cool because you're seeing it seriously from the ground up, like trees, Just forest, to forest. House. Yeah. So that's a really cool experience too. We don't have too much other, too much else to update well, on the house search. Not really. I mean like the timeline, I guess is probably what people want to know. And that would be, we have our estimate. We just got it. Then we're going to go to the bank. Which means it's bank time. Um, 
and we can talk about that more so in another video just like what kind of loan we're getting and, and that kind of stuff because it is kind of interesting the things we're learning about that and the opportunities that are out there we don't really know what we're doing yet we've yeah. been looking into the usda rural development loans yes but you, if you didn't know what that was um definitely look it up it's interesting it's for a specific like pocket of type of people and i think we might qualify um but it's basically to develop in rural areas rural areas yeah it goes by zip code and you have to make less than the average medium income for that zip code mm -hmm. or is it the county one or the other it could be the county i'm not sure i forget yeah uh, but it and then it has to be in a specific zip code there are certain spots that are blacked out that you can't use it in and there's all these other requirements so we're gonna see if we fit in. It's weird those. though, for the income, it's like you can't make too little, but you can't make too much. It's like just yeah. this happy little little spot. A little spot you have to slide into, so we'll see. Yeah. As for a house, once we get the mortgage, then we would decide on the home. You guys have seen us look around and there are two that we just really like that are in the back of my head. But every time you go there, they do have new models. And every so you, time. you don't know, um, but we would look again for a home, decide on a home. While the home's getting built in the factory, then everything else here would get done. And so really then it just, it starts. Our goal is still before winter. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I we got lucky this year with a really mild winter in the RV. Yes. But I don't think we'll get lucky two years in a row. I think we can do it. We, we still have all of the winterized stuff up on the RV. Like, I don't think that we can't do it, but do we want to do it? I prefer to be in a home for winter. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, if you're in a home for winter, you can get all set up for the spring and all the planning and stuff. Just so much easier. Yeah. But the biggest thing, the biggest update for us was coming home from our anniversary vacation to see our garden after five days. Because it's a very different thing when you go out to your garden every day and you see it, the changes very, very slowly. Oh, there's a new flower there. Look, that's growing a little bit. They look good. They look good every day. And then you leave for five days and come back and it's just so, it's like a different place. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, we have zucchinis thriving. They're growing. Um, we're going to get them pretty soon. My mom's sugar snap peas, we came back and it's like covered. All of a sudden there's hundreds of them. We're going to harvest some today actually to make some summer pasta with them. Um, I mean, it, everything grew everything uh the day that we got back or like the day after that we spent pruning tomatoes because they had just shot up and we do and we do like to prune our tomatoes pretty heavily um which we're going to show that in a vlog we're actually going to show to all the changes in the garden in a vlog i think we're actually going to film that tomorrow yeah. and that will be up hopefully fingers crossed on friday so be sure to stay tuned for that we'll get a like you'll get a little peek into um the garden then and everything going on if you're not following us on Instagram, though, you should do that, too. It's the Berry Mountain Homestead, um, and we just did a garden tour on our story, and I highlighted that. So if you can't wait for the video, go over on Instagram, check that out, and you can kind of get a peek into the garden there, too. Oh, and another big update that we weren't able... Well, we have one footage, one we video clip. We'll put it in for you guys to see. But one big thing that happened that we, like don't have an official vlog is a big surprise that we had in the chicken coops the other day <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we have not been collecting the eggs right away in the morning because a couple of the chickens have been laying a little bit later and when we let them out they're not all done laying mm -hmm. so i've been leaving them in there and then they've been coming back and getting them and i've been getting them in the afternoon and went in there to get it get the eggs and there was like a four foot black snake in there coiled up with the eggs trying to with his mouth all over one trying to eat it and that was a little bit of a surprise <laughs> yeah so i was just coming over to do the chicken coop and collect the eggs and clean it and i go inside and hello are you eating an egg? Little thief! Are you a little thief? Coming to steal my eggs? 
Oh, uh, we did not kill the black snake. We no. we like black snakes in the garden around the home. They're good. Um, but we did get rid of it <laughs> and we started to now make sure we get the eggs early in the morning. Yes. Um, and if we lose a couple eggs because they're laying elsewhere, so be it. We but he hasn't been back since we started collecting the eggs earlier in the day. No. So I think we solved the problem without killing it, which is the best I, the best we could hope for. Yes. Still a crazy experience. <laughs> That's that, the first time. Yeah. <laughs> So we hope you enjoy this kind of chatty, sit down, casual video with us. So we are excited for everything in our garden to be just really thriving right now. Let us know in the comments down below, what is one thing that you are really excited for in your garden? I know for me personally, it's definitely our tomatoes. We have um, Dr. Witchy's yellow. We have Black Beauty, a lot of interesting hybrids, hybrids, oh. a lot of interesting heirlooms that we are growing for the first time this year. And so I'm so excited to be growing them to see them but that's what i'm excited for what are you excited for other than the brussels sprouts because it's our first time yes but they take like, and they're like 100 babies. yeah they take like 120 <laughs> days to harvest so four months is a long time to wait for something but other than those definitely just normal old bush beans bush beans we love those yes we, we got get so many from so many so few plants and we got the um dragon tongue is that what's called dragon's tongue dragon's tongue which is like the swirl of purple and yellow and green it's, it's it'll be really cool super excited for those yeah and our normal favorite the purple royalty purple they're always good too. always awesome yeah so let us know in the comments leave one below about what you're excited for in your garden even if it's something you grow all the time just maybe something that you really enjoy leave it down in the comments we hope you guys like this video we're gonna try to make this an ongoing thing hopefully once a week if we have time yeah kind of like a bonus video if we have time for it we will uh, if life gets crazy we won't yeah. but we'll try <laughs> If you did like it, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to us. And we'll catch you in the next one. 